Good afternoon, everyone. I am Chris. This is Model Airplane Maker. And today we'll be finishing up the Tamiya Tomcat build with part four of this four part series. And we're going to be focusing on painting and finishing the 48 scale Tamiya Tomcat A. I'll show you a couple tips of uh, finishing a model in that classic Tamiya catalog style. So please sit back, enjoy, and let's get going. Welcome back to the channel, everyone. And as you can probably guess from some of those opening shots of this video, I'm going to be finishing the Tomcat in that wonderful high visibility, wonderful colorful high visibility finish that was used on Navy jets throughout the 60s, 70s, and I'm thinking the early 80s. Before things, I guess, turned all sort of sad and depressing out at sea, and they went with those low visibility, almost dreary gray markings. Anyway, it's a preference just of mine to see uh, all these bright colors on these planes. I'm also going to be doing my take uh, on the classic Tamiya catalog finish. So again, it's um, no weathering really and highlighting or detailing the panel lines. I loved that look, that catalog look. As a kid, that's what initially attracted me to this hobby. So this is almost like a throwback to me to build a plane that I really would have loved to have made back when I was a kid. As you can see, I'm painting the bottom of the fuselage with gloss white. And there's some advantages to doing that. And there are also some disadvantages. Uh, in terms of advantages, though, it's great because you're almost be able to skip a, a, a level or skip a, a step in your later steps, which is decals and putting any sort of panel line wash on. You don't have to worry about the, um, the wash flowing better or being able to slide the decals into place a lot easier because the paint is already glossy. On the disadvantage side, uh, any gloss paint is just uh, a bit of a pain to spray because for whatever reason, it can be, it can go on thick if you're not careful. So the, it, I guess the strategy here that I employ is small, uh, thin layers and build up the color gradually. So what you're seeing is almost a, a composite of almost, I would say, 40 minutes of painting the fuselage from bare, uh, bare plastic to what you see on this screen. It's hard to control gloss paint, I find, but if you can do it, um, and I think a lot of these AK lacquers and, and other paints these days do come in gloss. If you can control it, again, uh, thin layers, building that color up over time, you're really gonna get a great advantage at the end of being able to skip some steps. The ejection seats that came with the kit aren't bad. They're actually fairly nicely detailed. And what's great about them is that they employ a lot of different colors. So they really stand out in the cockpit once they're assembled. And I just did them really because this is an out of box build. I did them out of box. But you'll notice that in once they're assembled and put in, especially with the harnesses that came with the kit in decal form, it kind of looks a little silly. So when you look closely at the seats, the, uh, the, the harnesses almost look animated or drawn on. Well, and they are because it is artwork that went on the uh, decal sheet. I attempted to thicken them a little bit by placing the decal on a bit of uh, Tamiya tape and it made them a little bit thicker. But if I were to do this again, um, a definite advantage here would be at a minimum to get the harnesses done aftermarket or get an entire resin bang seat. I think that that would really uh, be a worthwhile investment to improve the cockpit. Another factor that makes these jets so attractive is that the demarcation line between the white underside and the gull gray or light gull gray upper is that it's a soft edge camo so it, it looks great and it, it blends a little bit 
This is a bit difficult to do in this scale freehand, at least for me. So a way to cheat and do this uh, in a way that's at least a little bit consistent is to use a white tack um, snake or a white tack roll and put it on the model pretty much where that demarcation is and then use some masking around it. To make sure that it stays as a quote unquote soft demarcation line, it you have to shoot the paint in a way that doesn't go right where the tack touches the fuselage. So in a minute, I'll be showing you some painting and to show you what I mean, but you want to hit it on an angle so that it keeps that nice, almost fuzzy line. Okay, so now we've put on the upper surface color. And as you see on this wing, there was a significant gloss white section that needed to be masked off. And I'm actually painting a flat mix of Tamiya colors from a recipe that I got uh, from a gentleman online and I'll put his name in the, uh, in the description in the video. So what I'm trying to do here is just get a nice clean even coat of the gray on all the flying surfaces which actually were just the wings if I remember and then I start hitting the fuselage with um, with the gray as well I just found that this tone with this mix was just the right level of gray warm gray almost a gray beige and it uh, it hit exactly what I remember these airplanes looking like And as you can see on this shot, what I'm trying to do is keep that soft edge. So I'm trying to paint almost upwards from that blue tack worm or blue tack snake, if you will, so that I'm not spraying right into the contact point, but I'm able to get that fuzzy demarcation line. This model is a little bit bigger than I'm used to. So I kind of had to hold it in a funny way in the spray booth when I was doing this in order to make sure that I wasn't spraying directly into the spot where that uh, white, task, white tack mask was. It's a little bit easier to do it from the top down like this. If, uh, if I didn't have to worry about the upper surface of, of the model scratching or, or I could just rest it on something, I would have just put it on a on some sort of a, a holder so that I could make this paint go a little bit easier. The next part here is that there is a walkway. The kit comes with a decal to try to make this job a little bit easier, but I thought eh, it would probably be not so hard just to mask it off with some very thin cuts of uh, Tamiya tape and then just use uh, some paint to ma uh, paint out these walkways. And I was right, it was very simple to do. Um, they aren't, I noticed that they aren't 100% perpendicular to each other. So you just have to take a, a watch. Actually, what I did was I used the decal itself to guide me as to where I should put the masks on this thing. And for some reason, they're only on one side of the airplane, and I don't know why that is. I think they were also very textured on the real thing. So I'm not repli replicating the texture, I'm just replicating the color. And that actually helps a little bit in the later stages where I'm uh, putting a little bit of wash on. Right behind the walkway, there are some vents that needed to be masked off and painted as well. And it's a little bit tricky to use some, um, some Tamiya tape to do these maskings. I always cut a fresh edge on each one so that I know there won't be any fuzzies or any uh, bits of whatever that might have been on my table that were picked up by the edge of the tape. And uh, <laughs> as you can see, I, I do a little bit of over masking when I paint these things. And that's due to my uh, experience of, of having to fix oopses at the end of the build. 
you don't have to mask as much as I do if you're a little bit more careful. Uh, in this shot, what I'm trying to do is show how I mask some tricky contours. The rudders were all painted jet black or sorry, um, like, like flat black. So to get those nice contours masked properly, the way I do is I attack it with a very thin strip of cut Tamiya tape, and then I build the uh, masking around it. So it's, it's a little bit um, tedious, maybe a little time consuming, but this way you can get your tape right up to the edge and not have to worry about paint bleeding under your mask. Um, so the only thing that I'll say about that is once you get that tape up to the edge, really press it in, either using your fingernail or a toothpick or your tweezers, whatever it takes to make sure that is pressed down. Another thing that I do to make sure that there's no bleed under is I, I never shoot the paint directly at that line where that that line that that's between the the mask edge and the part and flood it with paint i just go over that and i end my my spray either on the on the tape or on the part now i know if there are any true f14 fans out there they're probably not appreciating going with the tried and true cliche done to death vf84 jolly rogers finish on this airplane but for whatever reason when i think f14 and this goes way back to when i was a kid this was the f14 that i pictured in my brain and probably because that was the first one that i saw pictures of and there's just something classy about that black uh those black tails and the the black surround of the canopy tamia does not include a paint mask for this although they should and instead what they do is they supply a decal that you can place in front of the windscreen in order to replicate that semicircle of black around the canopy. What I did was I took that decal and I scanned it, took it over to my Cameo printer, my Cameo cutter, and I was able to make this actually made two of them i made two of these masks so that i could paint that semicircle and i don't really know um i guess if i were to do it by hand i would use an olfa cutter and sort of figure it out that way but this way i was able to replicate exactly what uh, to me had in mind at least on its decal to uh, to get this this black painted at the front and once that mask is down you just need to connect it almost from a straight line uh, from the uh, from the semicircle all the way to the rails of the uh, of the canopy and that way you'll get exactly where that black mask is supposed to be Tamiya does supply the masks for the canopy and the windscreen but they're not cut so you have to be careful cutting them out and fitting them on. They can be a bit finicky in the corners because of that, because they're not pre-cut, but that's all right. Um, a little bit of fine tuning is all it takes. And yeah, there's my standard mask, half the aircraft when I'm trying to paint certain sections of it in order to avoid any problems uh, of paint shooting into places where it's not supposed to go. And if I remember correctly, I still managed to get a spot somewhere uh, on the fuselage anyway. So it's a clumsy thing, I guess. It also doesn't help that my, uh, my paint booth is somewhat in a closet type of thing. So it's sometimes it's just a little tricky to move things around uh, while I'm spraying. On the other side, although I don't show it, on the other side, there is a fuel receptacle for the, uh, the in-flight refueling. And there is just an ever so slight gap that I could not uh, I could not fix and we're talking like thousandth of an inch here so what I did was I had to you know re-mask that and paint it again in order to get a nice clean line so if you're trying to replicate this um, this spray or sorry this uh, this uh, paint scheme just be careful on the other side where that uh, receptacle door is and you'll be fine so the classic Tamiya catalog look for its models was always a very clean look, 
they might have had oh maybe they didn't but i think they might have had some exhaust staining but it would have been very light but they most definitely did the panel lines and i believe they were rather stark in order to i guess in order to show off the detail a little bit better and i wanted to to do the same thing but i didn't want to have them so stark so i'm using more of a gray um, a dark gray panel line wash. This is my favorite MIG ammo panel line wash that I use. And I think that that showed just enough hint of the detail without, without it being a distraction and definitely made me think of those uh, catalog images from years ago. If you're interested in having a bit more detail about uh, these washes, by the way, I really recommend them. They are like, they're completely completely idiot proof if you're interested i do have a video where i demonstrate these being used on a gray zero and uh, I, the entire process from putting it on to uh to having it dry and taking it off about 40 minutes later all it takes is a q-tip it comes off very easy it's extremely forgiven in fact i even forgot in this particular build that I left a bit of the panel line wash on for I'd say three, four hours and uh, cringed, but I still took my Q-tip and I was able to wipe it off and everything was fine. The world was happy and my airplane was in the exact right place without needing me to repaint or strip it or anything like that. Okay, came to a bit of a snag at this point when I was putting the decals on. You see that nice stripe there? Well, the star and bars has to go right over top of it. And when I tried it the first time, um, I found that the, the decal was too translucent and you could see that, that bar through it. So speaking with my good buddy, Jim Bates over at a scale Canadian TV, we thought of different strategies, but the one that I went with was, uh, was this one. So I got some of this really nice post-it notes that has the sticky that's over the entire note, because if you've ever tried to mask over a decal, um, with any type of tape or vinyl, yeah, that decal is coming right off. So I was fretting about how to mask this, uh, this little dot that I was going to need to place under the stars and bars. And hey, this thing works. So it's just enough tack on this post-it note to stay on the model and create like a seal so that you can make that nice circle. But it's not strong enough to take up any of the uh, decals that are, decals that are already on there. The other strategy that people use is to make a circle, like uh, create a circle of decal, white decal material and put that on. That would work, but I was worried that it would make too much, like it'd be too many layers. I thought that the paint circle or paint blank would be a little bit thinner and easier and you wouldn't tell that it's there underneath the, the decal. So as you can see, I'm being extremely, <laughs> very careful and building up this color very gingerly so as to not overspray white anywhere and i was largely successful you don't have to completely obliterate the underlying uh, color because even on the star bar the white part there is enough color there enough white to uh to block out a, a small amount of remaining color underneath so there you have it. And that's the end result of that. And I was able to put the decal on there and you can't tell that the star, that that, that diagonal squadron marking was there. And so we'll just give a few shots of the final assembly of this thing. And uh, I just like to thank everyone for following this first build sequence with me. It was a, um, it was a good experience. I actually really, I don't typically build uh, Navy jets, uh, either modern or other, but I knew this kit was a very good one, and I thought that uh, that I'd enjoy the um, the experience. And definitely, the F-14 was a plane that I always loved as a kid. It was my favorite teen fighter, if you will. And uh, I'm glad that Tamiya brought out this really nice kit of it. 
Um, in terms of any sort of troubles or trials or tribulations when, uh, when making this kit, I have to say none, except it's a little bit bigger than I'm used to. And so it took a little bit uh, more maneuvering around to get the, get the paint on it than, than I'm used to doing, but that's not a big deal. I also enjoyed, or I learned a little bit when working with gloss whites. Um, they're very tricky, and if I were to do it again, I, I'd probably do it again. I don't think I'd use Tamiya paint though. I think I'd try to find something else to, um, to paint a gloss white. It's a very neat design because for two elements, one is these removable wings. Uh, so you could paint the wings and not worry about the swinging part, like where it's being hidden by the fuselage and also the front fuselage. So pretty much where all that black is, uh, is a separate part of the plane in the uh, in the build process so you can what i did was i was able to paint that separately so that involved a lot less lot less masking sorry and getting this airplane uh properly painted was a lot easier if it was all together it can be done but there's a lot more uh, masking of white and light gold gray that would go into it these last bits are the various uh there's air probes and antennae and i think that the color callouts are correct although i didn't go and do any research to see or, or make sure that they were so it's practically done and i really hope that you uh, enjoyed this process or sorry enjoyed this series of videos and if you did i'd like to hear from you because um uh, to see if it's whether whether something that people would like to see in the future and there you have it so i took some uh, some shots of the plane tried it on various backgrounds and again i enjoyed it i think that it, uh, it makes a great addition to my collection i don't have many teen fighters in fact i don't have any um, but i would have loved to have had this one as a kid and uh, I might give that F4 a try at some point, but there's a lot of stencil decals that need to go on that thing, and that just scares me to death. If you enjoyed this video, and you think that others might enjoy this video or the sequence, uh, please like and subscribe and share, and let me know what you think in the comments. Is the uh, VF84 Jolly Rogers f14 one that's done a little bit too much to death do you have a, a preferred one i'd like to hear about it have a great day everyone and thanks again bye, -bye.